Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to this machine learning course. In this lecture, we consider the logistic regression model to perform the classification task of machine learning. The previous lecture gave an introduction to the linear regression model. Here, we will modify this linear regression model to the logistic regression model. We will use this model to perform the classification task of machine learning. Then, the logistic regression model is generalized to softmax regression to perform multiple class classification tasks. The mean squared error cost function is replaced by cross entropy. We will learn why we should use cross entropy instead of mean squared error and what it means. Finally, it is shown how to evaluate classification models. Let's start with a simple example of a typical classification task. Here, handwritten digits are recognized by a classification algorithm. The 10 different digits from 0 to 9 are represented by 10 different classes. So each digit is a so-called target class. The algorithm takes an image of a handwritten digit as input. Then the algorithm identifies the digit with the corresponding class. The algorithm is trained with samples of handwritten digits where the corresponding classes are known. After that, the algorithm can identify handwritten digits. The pixel values of the image with a handwritten digit are the input or independent variables x1, x2, up to x capital K. The estimated classes are represented by categorical target variables as dependent variables y1, y2, up to y10 for the 10 digits. Here we consider binary target variables only. These have two possible states. Most often these are 0 and 1. So, in our example with the handwritten digits, the variables y1, y2 up to y10 represent the classes of the digits. For example, y5 is 0 if the digit is not a 4 and it is 1 if the digit is a 4. So, a classification algorithm estimates classes by binary categorical target variables. It uses therefore features, the independent variables x1, x2 up to x capital K. In the largest part of this lecture, we consider more simple classification problems with two classes only. Here, we consider an example sketched on the right side with class A, the light blue dots, and class B, the dark blue dots. For this specific problem, we need a single target variable Y only y equals 0 gives class A the light blue dots and y equals 1 gives class B the dark blue dots. An example for such a classification is spam mail detection. A mail can be either spam which gives class A the light blue dots or no spam which gives class B the dark blue dots. A classification model needs a decision boundary to decide between the classes. Such a boundary is sketched by the green line in the picture on the right. 
Then, the model can be used to classify new data points with unknown classes. Here, in our example, the new data point is classified as no spam. For the rest of this lecture, we will focus on the logistic regression model. The logistic regression model bases on the logistic function. This function is also called sigmoid function. It is defined by sigma equals 1 over 1 plus exponential function of a negative linear model. We've seen the linear model in the previous lecture. Here, at first, we consider the one-dimensional linear model. So we have only a single independent variable x. This linear model is given by beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. Substituting the linear model into the logistic function leads to the logistic regression model. The resulting function depends on x and has parameters beta 0 and beta 1. In general, the function has a typical so-called S-shaped curve shown in dark blue on the right side. Further, you can see if you adjust beta 0, the position of the curve is shifted along the x-axis. On the other hand, if beta 1 is changed, the slope of the curve varies. But no matter how the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 are chosen, the function is limited between 0 and 1 with a smooth transition in between. Here, for our classification problem with two classes, y equals 0 gives class A and y equals 1 gives class B. We estimate this target variable value y with the logistic function. For a certain value of the logistic function, we need to decide between class A or B. The output of the logistic function can be regarded as a probability because it is limited between 0 and 1. More concrete, the output can be the probability for class B. Then we would choose class B over class A if the probability value is above 0.5. This is true for our example data point. We define a model value y tilde equals 1 for sigma greater than 0.5. Then, in general, we would select class B because the probability for class B is above 50%. For our logistic function sketched, in the blue area the value of sigma is greater than 0.5. For sigma less than 0.5, we define y tilde equals 0. Then we select class A if the probability value is less than 50%. For our example, this is the area in green. So y tilde can be either 0 or 1, and y tilde represents our target variable y and is called the logistic regression model. Note that sometimes also the logistic function with a linear model itself is called the logistic regression model. But you need to specify a threshold to decide between class A or B. Here, we choose sigma equals 0.5. This threshold is sketched by a green dashed line and defines a decision boundary. It determines where the areas of the classes A and B 
are separated along the x-axis. This separation line, sketched in grey, is the decision boundary. Note that the value of sigma equals 0.5 can be any other value between 0 and 1 as well. We will go into the details later in this lecture. We need a cost function to fit the logistic regression model to data. Thereby, the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 are adjusted so that the logistic function fits the data. We consider a given training data set. Its target values are yi, which can be ISA 1 or 0 to represent the classes B or A. The input variable here is x, so the data point's input values are xi. The subscribed i denotes the data point in the data set, so a data point is yi xi. The corresponding value for the logistic function is denoted by sigma i at point x equals xi. The cost function measures the quality of the model fit to data. For logistic regression, the cross entropy is usually used as cost function. This cost function is shown on the lower left side. The cost function has two terms in its summation over all data points. The first one is highlighted in green. It has only a non-vanishing value for the target values y i equals 1. Then it gives the negative logarithm of the logistic function. If the logistic function itself approaches 0, this term gets large positive values because of the negative logarithm. If the logistic function approaches 1, this term vanishes. Consequently, this term has large costs if the target value differs from the model predictions. The second contribution in the summation, highlighted in blue, does similar things for the data point's target value y is equal to 0. Therefore, it uses the expressions 1 minus target value and 1 minus logistic function. In total, both contributions cover the two possible values of the target variable 0 and 1. The contribution of a data point to the cost function is large if model and true data point value differ. So minimizing such a cost function, we would expect the logistic function to fit the data in the best way possible. You might wonder why we put so much effort into logistic regression. Why not just use linear regression as a classification model? Let us consider the linear regression model with a single independent variable x. It is beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. When we take a look on the right side, you can see the model in green fitted to the data. We can use y tilde equals 0.5 to determine the decision boundary. This decision boundary is sketched by the grey dashed line on the right side. Every data point on the left half of the grey dashed line is considered to be in class A. Every data point on the right half is considered to be in class B. So the linear regression model is able to classify these data points correctly. However, if we take data points into account which are far from the others, the situation is different. Now, 
we fit the linear regression model again to data. It does not classify the data correctly. We have a single data point of class B on the left side of the boundary. So even if in theory it is very easy to separate two classes, linear regression cannot straightforward do this. Here the logistic regression is much better. The logistic function has a limited value range. Therefore, it is more insensitive to the data far from the geometric point where the two classes separate. So regression functions with a limited value range are preferred for classification. Section finished. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment down below. And thanks again for listening. See you in the next section.